hinder you, hinder you. Don't you let where you've been hinder you. Don't let what they've said hinder you, hinder you. Don't you let your past hinder you. You're a woman without limits. Yes, you are. Yes, you're you are. A woman. I went and I did my screen test. Uh, they used to call them screen tests then. Of course, I had done a lot of rehearsals, mm. so my voice was better, I was more composed. And um, I, I, I forgot about it. But they had said they needed an anchor very soon. So I did it on this day. Actually, I was called. When I, uh, they put my name down when I called, yeah. then they called me when I was in studio. By then, I was doing midday melodies. So I was doing midday melodies, I was called. A lady called Laura Okal was my shift. We used to ex uh, change shifts with her. So I told Laura, Laura, nimepigiwa simu na nation, and uh, I need to go for that interview. Can you come and uh, hold fort for me? Uh, so she said, fine. I had to go home. I used to live in Keno. I told the guys, I, I can't uh, come immediately because I was dressed a bit casually. Right. Uh, now you know salvation here, akitambo ninguo all the way down. Yeah, and okay. Yeah, because we, we were sanctimonious yes, religious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now we know that uh, you know life of it's course not in there. Yeah. It's not in you know all these yeah. things. So anyway, I went to Keno. On my way there, those are the days kwa matatu, watu wanajifanya wanasoma gazeti, wanaingia kwa kibeti yako, wana iba. So my phone was stolen on my way <laughs> to Keno. <laughs> Remember these guys are constantly calling me to know at what point I'm arriving. I had like a nice, uh, the, the Nokia, Nokia 110, mm. a white one, eh? a nice one. And I was waiting for them to call me so that they tell me at what point can I go. Anyway, I went home, dressed, went back, went to Nation. By now I had already done my, I know where Nation is. After all, I had passed by there yes, <laughs> to see yes. if they can right. get me a job. So right. I went to Nation and uh, I went in, where to me put after Sana, what has happened to the phone? We wanted you to come at this specific time when the CEO was here so that he can, you do the interview while he's there. Mm. So anyway, I did the, the, the screen test and after doing the screen test, uh, they went quiet for about two weeks. After two weeks, they called me. So they told me, uh, are you Winnie Mokami? Yes. Mm. So you need to come back for another one and you have to dress better remember i thought i had dressed well to eh? kill <laughs> <laughs> you even went home to change yes, please surely eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, and until your phone was stolen yes. on your way to look to, nice to look nice then they're telling me dress better but dress be really surely. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i i, I then at that point I, okay fine so when do you need me you need to give me proper warning so that i'm able to dress better right you know the language god gives you the tongue of the learned. Yes. Yeah, so I, I told them, okay, fine. So come, uh, they told me to come after three days. So after three days, I had to dig deep in my pocket. Remember, my money is paying school fees for my sisters, is paying my rent. Taking care of so, your mom. So, yeah, so yeah. Duo is not a, and Nanesi, because I'm all 12K, <laughs> mm. but then 12K was good enough money. Yeah, right. Yeah, because you just need to manage it. Um, and then God used to open doors. I would do voiceovers, pay, uh, get 4,000 shillings extra. So life, life, somehow I managed life. Right. So I said, okay, fine. Let me go now buy a suit. But I had to go downtown. Yani ile ndani kabisa kule camera inauzwa. So I went there and I bought a nice black suit. And I went and I did my voice, uh, my, my screen test. But interestingly, they went quiet again for another two weeks. After that, they called me and they told me, you know what? The CEO watched you and he said, this one will compete with Catherine Kasavula. That's what uh, Dr. Kibora said. 
um, this is information I was now getting from my boss, the one who now became my boss. Uh, he told me, ah, mkubwa alikuwa na kasema wewe ndo utakompete na, na Catherine Kasavuli, so you better not let us down, eh? Nikamwambia, I cannot let you down, but whoa, those yeah. are big shoes. Catherine Kasavuli, <laughs> really? You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, but... Um, and every man was in love with Catherine Kasavuli, mm. <laughs> including mine. Yeah. <laughs> He tells me as a young boy, he was just, oh my God, oh my, how can this be even human? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was, she was awesome and yeah. she was so authoritative. Right, you right. Know, and she yeah. knew her thing. Right. So um, when I was told that, I knew these are big shoes to fill. But for some funny thing, like I tell you, God had a way of just peace that surpasses man's understanding, wow. you know? So I, I, I went in, they had to dress me. I went in, I spoke to the HR. I said, I'm going to pay you for ABC. I said, I'm going to pay you for 12,000. I said, I'm going to pay you for 100,000 shillings. They're like, from 12,000 to 100,000 shillings. <laughs> 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 and you know what? They started me off at 95,000 shillings. Wow. For me, I felt like I had hit Fort Knox. No, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like I no, had. Seriously? Yes. From 12 to 95, hey, did yes. you change your, what did you change? And, and, and they buy you clothes. Yeah, so the 95,000 is for you to look pretty. Yeah, and look the part. And eat what you want. And eat what you want. And go where you want. But they buy you clothes. Very expensive clothes. So uh, for me, that was a game changer, you know. They buy you clothes. Exactly. So for wow. me, it was a game changer. So I stayed there for about, um, you know, like I had, uh, I started learning the ropes. I had to cut my hair at some point. They're like, okay, fine, make it shorter. Okay, fine, do weave, you know, to, to get the right, right yeah, look. The right look for mm -hmm. me. So I went through the ropes. All this time, God is prepared. I mean, what did Esther go through? <laughs> Esther preparation. Had to go, yeah, preparation. So I think I was going through the preparation so that I can be launched into the world. And um, I, it, it was an amazing time. And uh, within the period of about three months, four months, is when now I came to know what God was doing behind the scenes. Mm. I will shock you when I tell you that. Um, one of the bosses there who is still working there, her name is Pamela Asigi, was doing her story. And when she was doing her story, one of the tips that we had been recorded on was, was the tip she was to erase so that she can put her footage. You know, the, the, the whole process, uh, when you're doing media, there's a way you record and then you have to remove that recording from here. and put So that it you there can record again. So it, that yeah. you can record again. So it's those tapes that you do, you know, uh, back and forth. So she put in the tapes. Then she saw the first uh, person who was doing a test, a screen test. And she said, Ay, okay, fine. What I need to before I download story yangu, nione what is happening. So I was the second one on that tip. Now uh, dressed the first time when I, when I dashed home to change. So I was on that tape. And Pamela said, Ay, Nation is looking for news anchors. Have they seen this one? So Pamela called the boss. And the boss came and watched the tape. So at the end, you would read the news and then now leave your number. So that's how I got my first phone call. As in, the tape was to be erased for some other stuff to be put in. Hey. Then God positioned Pamela. Aye. No, you know the story of God, eh? Yes. Yeah, it's too much. Sometimes he weaves everything together. Exactly. The Bible says all things work together for good. Yeah. For those who love God yes. and are called according to his purpose. Yes. So sometimes you can even forget. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they're not calling mm. and you can even forget you did an interview yes. and stop stressing. Yeah. But God is on your case still. Yes. So the mm. first tape was to be erased. So I got the phone call and phone call and then I joined Nation and I became a news anchor, I had the top, Nini. So life went on. So that's how my journey to media was like. Oh my yes. gosh, okay. <laughs> then while still in media, mm -hmm. you went through a very uh, difficult moment. Yeah. Um, you know, while still there. Yes. Tell us about it and how it changed your entire life. Um, at this point, I think I had already begun to understand that my life is not mine. And uh, there's a way that God had planned things. And sometimes you think that you've entered a comfort zone. So you're thinking, this is it. I have reached my heaven. From 12 to 95, mm -hmm. you can easily reach heaven. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and it increased over the years because I was there for about four or five years. So yeah. it kept on increasing. By the time I was living, I was earning much, much more. Right. And um, I was still learning the ropes, doing the business, 
But at some point, I got into a comfort zone. So I had felt like I had gotten home. You know, now this is it. But somehow, God keeps stirring something within your spirit. So by the time I was leaving, I had already started planning to leave. Yeah? I just used to feel, my time here is up. Isn't that amazing? But is it really up? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, you, you, you're like, okay, the TV, TV, phone calls, you know, it gets, it's exciting. Right. But at some point, I was feeling that my time was up. And the challenges were real because uh, in any transition, especially a transition that you have not properly planned yourself for, is, is, is a challenge. And sometimes you feel like you're being pushed away from where you have begun to feel comfortable. So I had to leave. At some point, nation went through some sort of, uh, what is it called, restructuring. And uh, with every restructuring, of course, some people have to fall off the wagon. So I was one of those many people. We were many, so we were one of those many people who had to fall off the wagon and uh, start a new life. Um, but before I fell off the wagon, I did quite a bit of, you know, uh, soul searching. I had done a lot of uh, other things like features. I had started making money for the company because I was working with the sales department. Then I said, if I can make this kind of money for this nation, how much more can I make it for myself? Those are questions you ask yourself, but you still don't know at what point am I leaving. Like to, you, you don't want to jump off the boat. Yes. And uh, walk on water. Yes. So God <laughs> has to push you out. Right. And um, at that point is where, uh, when, when I got this, the, 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 the information that um, I'm no longer going to be doing the news, I'm going to have to think about doing something else. I was in prayer. Actually, I was in my first day of fasting. So, for some funny reason, God was preparing me to have peace that surpasses man's understanding. Mm -hmm. And I remember that time I kept on listening to the preaching around, even when the storms, you know, the, the disciples started feeling like the, the boat is being rocked, they are going to die. And that point is a point where God just wakes up and says, I mean, I mean, he's dead, but he's with you. You know, so that is encouragement that kept on, uh, you know, uh, um, in my heart. And I believed that despite and in spite of all these challenges and the shifting that God is taking me through, sometimes it's not pretty. I knew that God was still in control. And again, I'm a problem solver. My life has been challenge after challenge. Bring it on. Come on. Yes. So you have to keep do on. Do you know with Bishop mm. T.D. Jakes, do you know what happened? Mm -hmm. He kept on resisting from uh, leaving his job because mm -hmm. God wanted him to start ministry, but he kept on resisting. The company had to be closed. When God wants you, he's going to get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he has to close the company, mm -hmm. whatever he has to do, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And it w even if you have to go through those moments of being shaken, yes. you know, and all that is meant to actually affect your, your self-esteem exactly. so that you don't step out. Yes. You know? Yes. But... It worked for the better oh, for me. Oh, it you. worked for the better for me because mm -hmm. at some point I went and bought all Oprah Winfrey shoes and I listened to her story, how she was also in the media and I'm like, ah. And they told her, impossible mission, you don't look the part. Yes. Please. And, and uh, she went on and, she, and I mean, she's a business mogul in the media yeah, world. I'm totally. yet to get there. It's a journey and, uh, but, but I can say I'm in a good place. Amen. And I remember that time I would come to church when we were at Ngara. And you kept on saying that, you know, you have to keep on commonizing your issues. Yes. Yeah. Why are you thinking that your issue is so unique? Mm. There are people who have gone through worse. Yeah. So can you look at your situation and find solutions? Wow. I so, said that? Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. So when you get born again, it's not just your heart. I yeah. mean, your mind is Everything. where your conscience is. Yeah. And that's what God operates right. you know, as a machine. Right. So you have to constantly make sure that your mind is in the right place, regardless of the situation you're so in. So tell us now about the transition. Now you're out. Yes. Now you're on your own. Back yes. to the world again. Are yes. you going to sell porridge? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There are levels, yeah, and then there are dimensions, okay, like good. Bishop would say, <laughs> and, and realms. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I, I was in a dimension, yeah. So I sat down and I got phone calls, even from citizens who wanted to hire me to become a news anchor. But I had gotten to a point whereby I had decided, no, I'm not going back to TV. I have to do something better than that. So I sat in my house for about three months. You know, just researching what, what does it take to start a company, uh, what is public relations, uh, how can you run your business, you know, stuff like that. So for three months I was there and then I decided to get out and said, Mokami, you have to get out of this pity party. 
I know you're lying to yourself that you're thinking about how to start your business, but you actually need to get out there and, you know, interact, yeah? So God gave me the courage and the confidence to get out there. So I went there, there's a place called Chester House, you know, where I would go. I looked for graphic designer to design my logo. I started finding out, okay, fine. So you look for, you search three names for companies. You take them to Sharia House. Then you're given, you know, all those. I had to learn through the job. Right. Nobody was holding my hand. At that point, again, God has thrown you into the lion's den. But he knows that he has your back. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, he's right there. So instead of feeling sorry for yourself and yeah. pity partying, mm. you decided to come out of the party yes. and just make your own. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And then they put confetti <laughs> while yeah. at it. Come on. <laughs> come on. Give me yeah. five. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, 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 I learned the ropes of opening a business. I would sit at Chester House. Um, the retrain, I mean, when I left Nation, they gave us a good package. So, so a, a very good package, money that I'd, I wouldn't have held all at the same time should I have continued being employed. So I held quite a bit of money, some kidogo millions. Yes. So that, Hello. yeah, uh, but I, I took the money and I felt like, um, thank you nation, you have given me the exposure. And on top of that, you're giving me capital. Thank that's you. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah that's not yeah. so bad. Yeah. So I went on and um, I would sit at Chester House. I would decide my company profile. My first logo is ridiculous. <laughs> Ashoro, you know, it just looks funny, <laughs> but at least it was some place I started. And <laughs> I, I kept on telling my friends, you know what? I would want an office right here, right here at Chester House. Can I tell you some of the funny things that Christians do? We actually remove our shoes, we step and we claim. So that's what I did. I told my friend, you know what, Mimi, if I remember those days, Mungu wa menitua kitengela na ilikuwa nauza porridge, yeah. I need to reignite that faith. So, nikasema, upper Chester House is where I'm going to have an office. So I went to first floor. I removed my shoe and I was looking around so that nobody sees me. <laughs> and I stepped on it and I said, I claim an office here in Jesus' name. So I would do that at least once a week. At some point, I was told, hey, there's an opening. Because getting an office at Chester House was not going to be an easy thing. Right. Apparently, they were constantly booked because they're a bit more affordable. So at some point, I went, I said, let me go and see the management and see if there's an opening, if I can get an office. So I went to see the management. They told me, ah, kuna mtu anatoka in the next one month kuja ni kuonyeshe office. Mm. So I went and I saw the office and I said, this is my office. Wow. And that's where wow. I am up until today. I Wha took the office. What? Yes. So I, I, ha I have an office at Chester House. Wow. Yeah. So tell us, what are you doing now? Uh, I'm, I'm doing public relations and media consultancy. Now Just you've become actually a guru in PR. Oh, yeah. Mm. Tell us about it. Yeah. So um, I, I do a lot of consultancy. I largely work uh, with uh, the public sector. Uh, I started off by trying to do the corporate world but God has a way of directing you because also in business you must find your strengths and you must find your niche. So my niche is in the public sector. So I do a lot of uh, political campaigns. I do a lot of government consultancy. So that's basically what I do. Mm. Yes. And right now, uh, funny enough is that, um, and, and PR for me, the way I look at public relations, it's, it's, it's a game changer. It's a problem solver where culture and behavior is concerned. It's not so much about how you look, but about what content are you sharing with the people? Is it impacting their lives? Um, I'll tell you for, some, for, for a fact, now we have started a campaign as a company, Winners Frontiers International, where we would like to change our society's mindset in the area of loving your nation. Because the Bible talk says, to us. you know. Talk to us. Yeah. You know, oh my God, let me tell you, just even before you continue, yeah. do you know for me, it's been so in me. Yeah to speak well about our nation. Because yes. I keep asking, okay, you speak badly. Are you relocating to Uganda? Yeah. This is our nation, yes. you know? Yes. <laughs> so we might as well embrace it. We might as well love it. Mm -hmm. We might as well be patriotic. I've been preaching about it. Uh, so talk to us. Funny, because actually the campaign is called I Am A Patriot, yeah? So um, there are so many values that are entrenched within the Constitution, and there are about 17 of them. And the number one is patriotism. But most often than not, we find people preaching peace. 
And it doesn't mean that peace is the absence of war. But then again, why keep on preaching peace when the real problem is within us? You know, you as a human being. Because the moment you change your own behavioral change, your own cultural beliefs, then you're able to impact the next person. Right. And the next person and the next person. Can you imagine if somebody comes and tells you, ah, my Kenya, forget it. Then you say, no, no, but wait a minute, where do you live? Yes. You live in Kenya? Yeah. So why would you talk like that about it? Exactly. Why don't you change it? Yes. Why don't you start yes. yourself? Yeah. Imagine if you say that, somebody else says that, somebody mm. else says that. Somebody's going to get the message. It's going to be a movement. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it took Jesus to yeah. change the world. Just one person. One? Yeah, so it takes us uh, believing in a mission and believing in something. Besides, the greatest commandment is love. So, and love is not just, you know, loving yourself. It's also loving the next person and doing actions that would, you know, benefit their lives. So the Armour Patriot campaign is basically targeting the middle class, you know, the, who, the ones who have a lot to say. Yes. <laughs> they have a lot to say and so <laughs> little things to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they actually need to do something about it. So we are talking to them and telling them, can you be an ambassador? Where once you prophesy or you claim that I am a patriot, then when you're taking your shower in the house, when you're having your coffee, when you're walking the streets, you have committed your mind, you have committed yourself, I am a patriot. So even when you're called to practice uh, corruption, because corruption is one of that monster that we're yet to deal with, then you remember that you have made a commitment and you have actually testified, like we say, I'm born again, is the same way you're saying, I am a patriot. So that kind of movement where we want to change wow. culture, we want to change behavior, and we're inviting everybody, you know, to be part of it. We wow. have a website called uh, www.iamapatriot.com where you go in there and you look at uh, the values that we are pushing for and how to enroll, then you can enroll. Wow. Then you have to dress up. You know, the most interesting thing about the whole campaign is that we are asking you to dress up in red and black. Why? It's part, uh, they're the colors of the flag. But in the process of you looking for a red and black dress, you're thinking, I am dressing in red and black to go and take a picture in the studio to say I am a patriot. So the whole process, we are changing you right. as an individual. And when you tell somebody else to do the same thing, and you see, it is, it's a flamboyant thing. Yeah, We are making it very flamboyant because it's about portraying you to the public. We want you to become be on the billboards at some point, dressed in red and black, claiming to be an, a patriot. So we want you to, to have pride. You know, build your self-esteem at the same time. Remember, I had to go through that challenge so that I can understand that those are issues that people deal with right. and begin to actually come with a solution that would help, you know, them feel good about themselves. So yes, so wow. that's what I'm up to right now. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. So Mokami, you are now half yourself. Yes. Tell us, what, what do you mean? I mean, how many kilos have you lost so far? Uh, 45. <gasps> yes. 45. Yeah, 45. Oh my, you better clap for me. <laughs> <laughs> do yes. Do you, let me tell you, when you see somebody who has lost one kilo, one, please clap for them, remove your heart. <laughs> Losing a kilo is not a joke. Yes. Losing weight in any way is not a joke. Yes. It's a big deal. Yeah. So we oh, kudos to thank you. you. Oh thank my you. Thank God. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's really nice. Yeah. And, um, and on top of that, you look amazing. You look actually mm -hmm. half your age. Yes. I'm telling you. Yeah. From that Mokami to and this I'm only Mokami. 15. So you can imagine and I'm seven and a yeah. half years. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's been a journey. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's been a journey. Um, at some point when I started the business, it comes with a lot of pressure, you know, and you let yourself go at some point. So I let myself go and I was constantly focusing on where is the next paycheck? Where is the next paycheck? And for some funny thing, God has never let me down in that department. Um, aside from now, there are some challenges I'm facing, mm. but I know I will overcome them. Yes. So, but you know those challenges where you are so consumed by certain targets that you forget about yourself. So I had forgotten my, about myself for quite some time. And then I said, hey, Mokami, look Wake in the up. mirror. Yeah. yeah, you need yeah. to, you, you're the superstar, you're God's superstar. Yes. Can you get yourself back together? So I went and saw a professional. And uh, here I am, 45 yeah. kgs wow. lighter. Yes. Wow, yes. That's, uh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank so you. So tell me, what, what's your parting shot? What, what would you tell mm -hmm. a girl? 
who's gone through that kind of situation, mm -hmm. you know, maybe being oppressed by situations mm -hmm. and, and uh, jobless and mm -hmm. wandering mm -hmm. and uh, slow self-esteem. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Well, I'll tell them um, it's not always easy to come up with steps of life, you know, because we have five steps to this, seven te steps to that. But I have learned through my life's journey that step number one is that you have to, whatever, whatsoever a man thinketh, so is he. Whatever you think you are, that's exactly what you are. Do not allow anybody to tell you who you are and who you're not. So whatsoever a girl thinketh, so is she. The next thing is faith with action. Yeah, you must have faith, then you must activate it. Because there's no way of having faith and sleeping and looking up at the ceilings and hoping that the heavens will open up and pour some money or new, for example, if it's money you need or positioning, you know, so you have to take faith with action. The third one, uh, maturing in life, I have learned to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So those are the three things that I would like to tell any lady because wow. there's so many things we go through, but we are self contained. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, thank thank you for you. coming. Thank You've you done such an amazing me. job, and yeah. I know somebody's life has been transformed. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. This is Woman Without Limits, Mokami. You heard her story. And you know what? Your story, too, can change. It will change. If you just allow God to work together with you, he's an amazing God. You are never born empty. And the devil doesn't fight empty vessels. There's something inside of you, and you need to get out and do it in Jesus' name. May the good Lord bless you. May he do you well. Have yourself an amazing week.